Most electric cars on the market today, with perhaps the exception of entry-level models or compliance cars like the Fiat 500e, come with several different ways you can charge them depending on where you are and the available charging infrastructure. There's the charger that came with your car, which either plugs into a standard 100 to 110 volt electrical outlet, if you live in North America or parts of Asia, or a 230 volt electrical outlet if you're elsewhere in the world. Then there's a dedicated domestic charging station, either with a cable attached that you plug into your car or, as is the case in some markets, a specially designed socket that will take a specially designed portable charge cable that acts as a connection between your station and your car. Then there are the high power quick or rapid charging stations that pump high voltage direct current power directly into your car's battery pack. The Chatamo DC quick charge standard, CCS quick charge standard, and Tesla supercharger standards are all variants of the same principle, although sadly not interchangeable protocols. In markets where the Renault Zoe is sold, there's also three phase high power AC quick charging, which can charge your vehicle in a similar time to a DC quick charging station, but uses some of the car's onboard power electronics to convert the AC to the DC power that the battery needs. All of these charging technologies are designed to get electricity into your car's battery pack, but I'm often asked by electric car customers which charging methods offer the best long life for their car's battery pack. So, I figured it was time to make a video on the subject. First up, I should note that if used correctly, none of the charging methods I've just talked about should inherently cause problems with your car, although DC quick charging will sometimes put your car's battery under higher stress. That's because in the case of DC quick charging, if you happen to use a car with a passive thermal management system, such as the Nissan LEAF or Kia Soul EV, you may find that repeated heavily quick charging use in extremely hot weather can negatively impact your car's battery life. But by the same token, increasing evidence suggests that regularly using a quick charging station with your electric car can actually help your car to maximize its battery life, as the high currents involved in rapid charging can help prevent the dendritic buildup that occurs inside every lithium-ion battery pack and ultimately affects the car's range. For example, there are Leaf taxis roaming the roads of the UK with more than 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometers on the clock, and not a single problem caused by regular rapid charging, often many times a day. The only times you should be cautious of DC quick charging then? Well, when the weather is extremely hot and the car's battery pack is hot, or if you plan on parking the vehicle up after quick charging it. In these cases, try not to quick charge beyond 80% and you should be okay. So how about a dedicated public or domestic charging station setup? Well, in most cases, this is the ideal type of charging for your electric car, as it doesn't stress your car's battery pack quite as much as quick charging, but it can still get power into the battery pack in a reasonable amount of time. Seven kilowatt charging stations are now becoming the norm, and they should refill even a large battery pack like the Chevrolet Bolt EV in six to eight hours. Sometimes you can even decide when your car charges, either using the car's onboard telematics, a charge timer, or the charging station's own smart systems. This means that you can get your car to finish charging just before you need to leave, as well as set the cabin temperature to the way you like it, something that's perfect on cold mornings and hot afternoons. Finally, let's talk about the portable charging cable that came with your car. As I mentioned earlier, it's either going to operate somewhere around 100 to 110 volts or at 230 volts. But in both cases, the current, that's how fast the power is flowing into your car, will be lower with a portable charging unit than it would be through a dedicated wired in charging station. And that means that charging will take longer. And if you're in a country with just 110 volts, it'll take a lot longer. For example, I can charge my 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV overnight from empty using a dedicated seven kilowatt charging station, but it would take me several days using the 110 volt US market charge cord that came with my car. Another point to note about the slower type of charging here is that it's often less efficient than a dedicated charging station, since the onboard charger in your car is optimized for efficiency at the kind of voltage that you'll find coming from a domestic or public charging station. And that will ultimately lose you a little more power every time you charge using a portable charger than when you use a dedicated wired in charging station. 
Overall thoughts? Electric cars are engineered to charge at a variety of different levels and a variety of different environments. I always pick the middle power level, known as level 2 in many markets, when I can, but if I'm on a long road trip, I'll use rapid charging without thinking twice. So relax, your car can usually take it all in its stride. That's it. As always, hit the notification bell to hear the moment a new show is uploaded. And if you want to help us make more of these videos, consider donating through Patreon or by clicking on the Bitcoin link below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep evolving.